Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory always. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Well, we're so excited to to worship, highlight of our week, and and, uh, we just pray that you move extraordinarily in our lives today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Great news. I have good news and bad news. The good news is, it's the last Sunday of the year. Happy, well, happy new year. Where's that? Hey, what happened to my slide here? Where's my, where's my, where's my slide? What happened? I got all kinds of signals up there. Anyway, happy new year. I had a new year slide, man. It was, it was great and everything, but I go, well, anyway, (laughs) this is really, the bad news is it's just a church year. Uh, This is the last end of the church year. We still have like six weeks of of 2020, which is evident, and the slides aren't even working right. It's a great year. (laughs) Anyway, uh, this is is the last week of the church year, and so we still have six more weeks to go. Uh, In any case, in any case, we want to close out this year by talking about some financial principles to build our life on. (laughs) This is all going to be good, I can tell. Uh, You know, I had a chance to talk with just a, a really neat guy last week who who didn't belong to a church and and the reason was because he really felt churches were were money grabbers that churches were all about money and and i've heard that before i've heard it many times before actually and it sort of broke my heart because i know the majority the huge majority of churches aren't like that at all i know at first trinity we're certainly not about that but having said that we're going to talk about money what could be better? <laughs> I, I'm wondering if I'm ever going to get my... Oh, man, there you go. There you go. Sweet. Ha. Well, that's not it. You're just messing with me, Vicar. Happy New Year! All right. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, the sad truth is, because so many people think churches are, are, are just about money, is one of the reasons that we don't talk maybe more about how we handle our finances but we really should because God has a lot to say about our money and how we should use it in wise ways. And it's a shame to avoid the topic because God says when we, when we follow his principles of wise money management that he will bless our lives and we will have extraordinary peace. And so it's a disservice to God's people when we avoid this topic. <laughs> It's like y'all aren't important enough to hear the truth. We're back. Oh, this is so good. All right, so, so uh, we're looking for the immediate gratification. We look for the immediate response to big payday. We don't look at the big picture. I met a guy in Haiti who had a mango tree, and, and he could sell his mangoes and, and make money. And... and uh, He could continue every time they would produce, which is a couple times a year, he could sell the mangoes and make money for a long time. Or or his other option was he could cut down the tree and make it into charcoal, which is a lot of what they do, and make a little bit more money in the immediate. But uh, this guy just couldn't see the big picture. He didn't understand that as long as he could pick the mangoes and sell them, he would have a, a longer source of income plus he would also have food to feed his family. And, and yet all he could think of was, I got a little bit more money immediately if I just cut it down. So he cut it down. This principle of earning little by little it just is really countercultural. But uh, we need to, to not look at the quick fix, not look for the big payday, but look at the long haul, the, 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 the big picture. But slow and steady wins the race. So we earn little by little, and then we save little by little. Proverbs 21 says, The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp it down. Now, uh, COVID shows us what happens when we don't take time to save little by little, uh, and and we don't have something for emergencies. Uh, You know, I talk to so many people who don't have a budget, and as a result, they don't know where their money goes. 
They don't know what happens to it. And, and a budget is simply planning where our money is going to be spent, where our money goes, rather than getting to the end of the month and wondering, where did the money go? And even though these people don't have a budget, they're still surprised when they get to the end of the month and their money is all gone. An important part of a budget is to save little by little because there's a, a few things that happen when we save little by little, just, just saving regularly, even if it's a little bit, but for the long haul. The first thing is that we have this emergency fund. So if the car breaks down or if our furnace goes out, uh, then we're not upset about it. We have money to fix it. We're not left out in the cold. And the, the second thing that happens is that we have this ability to provide for our family. You know, they feel secure because we, they, they know we have backup and that we're not going to panic. And this is really true these days because so many businesses have had to close or a lot of people have been laid off from work because of this virus. And so they've had to rely on their savings. I even have a family who has had to dip into their savings and had this emergency fund because uh, they have been laid off, but they've not been worried about it because they knew this principle and they were prepared for when it came. Paul said, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is even worse than an unbeliever. Powerful words. Because God calls us to provide and protect our family. And this is one of the ways that we can provide and take care of our families. We save little by little. Proverbs 13 says, A man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Now, you know, I read this verse and I feel really bad because I'm spending my kids' inheritance. The third, saving by little by little helps us prepare for our retirement years. I, I, it's a mistake for us to totally depend on Social Security to take care of us. Uh, I, I've, I've met a lot of people who have realized that they're only 10 years out of retirement and, and they're not ready. And so they're struggling to play catch up and put something away in these later years. And, but as a result, they're filled with, with tension and anxiety about it. Again, Proverbs 13, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Susan and I have tried to teach our kids the value of how important this principle is and planning for the future, especially, especially while they're younger. And you know, let, me, let me show you what I mean. Dave Ramsey, I've used this before, but Dave Ramsey tells us this really good story about brothers Ben and Alex. And, and at the age of 19, Ben put $2,000 a month away every year until he was 26. For, so for about, uh, really about eight years. And, and then, just that's all, and then when he was ready to retire, he had $2.3 million. Alex, on the other hand, didn't start putting away until he was 27, and he put $2,000 uh, away and, until, until he was the age of 65, so that's 39 years. And still, at the end, he only had $1.5 million. So, so I, you know, I'm not a financial planner, but I know enough to tell you that it's important that not only do you plan and save little by little, but the, the earlier you start, the better you're going to be. You will never be able to play catch up. The third pillar is to be generous. Uh, now, this one's a little tricky because we want to save to be sure, but, but, but we want to trust God above all else. Uh, we want to trust him. To, that he will indeed provide for every need. Seek him and, and his righteousness, and, and God's going to take care of the rest. And so we don't put our hope in our money. We don't put our trust in anything but God and God alone. And, and one of the ways that God provides is through the generosity of his people. He says in 1 Timothy 6, Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Now, last week we learned that all we have comes from God, and, and it is his gift to us, and he calls us then to be good and faithful managers of his gifts to us. That means that we are, are to trust him first. And we show that trust when we tithe, when we give back to him 10%. It reveals that our faith and trust is not in our money, but our faith and trust is in Jesus. 
And so we are generous toward God, who is certainly, certainly generous toward us. Matthew says, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Beloved, if we want a deeper relationship with God, to, to live more fully committed to him, then that means we commit our lives more fully, all aspects of our lives, to, to follow him and to follow his plan. And so part of that commitment is that we're going to learn then to be generous with our time and our abilities and our resources. We follow his word, we trust his way, that he always, always, always has our best in mind. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, listen really carefully to this. I am not saying that, that giving makes you more, or makes you a better Christian. I'm not saying giving makes you a better Christian. Absolutely not. That is not true. But what I am saying is that the more we seek God, the more we pursue him, the more we make Jesus the treasure of our heart, the more generous we're going to be because the more we're going to be like him. And God is so generous toward us. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God is so generous toward us. God's heart is generous toward us. God is so filled with love and compassion toward us that he would give his son Jesus to die in our place. And that Jesus loves us so much that he was willing to endure the pain and suffering and agony of dying on a cross because of our sin. He would die for us, but then three days later, rise from the dead to give us eternal life. He rose from the dead that we might be with him forever. God, in his infant love, though, continues to look upon our every need to hear the cry of our heart, and to meet those needs in the gift of his son, Jesus. I love the way Paul put it in Romans 5. He said, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As God transforms us more and more and more into the image of his son, then the more and more and more we become loving. And the more we become loving, the more we become generous. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is a great example of what this looks like. Um, uh, Paul uh, went from, uh, was transformed into more loving, generous person. He went from persecuting and arresting Christians to loving even Gentiles. He would say in Acts 20, In everything I showed you, that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Beloved, being generous is not only one of the great ways that we demonstrate God's love for others, but I'm telling you, it's just fun. It's one of the most fun things we can do. In fact, in fact, the more we become like Christ, the more it just is in our nature to be generous. It's just who we are. We don't even realize it. It's just, it's just who we are. Jesus said in Matthew 25, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And on and on, he goes on and on. Being generous and loving and caring for others is it, just in our nature. It's who we are. We don't even realize that it's extraordinary. It's just who we are. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3 <laughs> says... Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. The point is, we also use our spending to store up treasures in heaven. Because we can't take our money with us to heaven, but we can use it in ways while we're here on earth to, to make a difference. We can use it to help others and, and tell others about God's love for them in Christ. We can use it in ways 
to make sure others have an opportunity to be in heaven with us. So we earn little by little, save little by little, we're generous, and then the fourth pillar is we avoid debt. Avoid debt. Paul says in Romans 13, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Now, this verse is really more about the freedom to love others than it is about debt because debt prevents us from being generous and showing God's love the way we would like to. Debt happens when we live above our means. In other words, debt happens when when we spend more than we make, when the out goal is greater than the income. And again, this is really easy to do if we don't have a budget. Uh, uh, and so we need to make a budget. We need to make a plan for our money, including including this, this truth about debt. Debt can be managed, it, but, but it can also create a lot of problems. And, and, uh, and debt has this power to rob us of joy and peace. It, because we live in this consumer-driven society, and, and you can get whatever you want when you want it. You don't have to wait. You can, just, you can get it now. You can pay later. You can even just charge it. I, I recently saw a commercial that was encouraging you to take out this loan to pay off all your credit card debt. The problem with that is you still have all that debt, and now you're going to just start loading up your credit cards again. Proverbs 22 says, The borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, while I would not encourage debt, you can and should make sure that you have budgeted to pay off your debts. And that means then that that you also need to budget for big ticket items that you buy, like your house or your car. Make sure that you are not living beyond your means to pay for those things, that you can afford what you have. Because we, we, you know, we don't want to give this impression that we are better off than we really are. We want to be realistic. Proverbs 13 says, there is, no one who, there is one who pretends to be rich but has nothing, and another pretends to be poor but has great wealth. We want to avoid debt. The number one cause of problems in relationships, and thus the number one cause of divorce, is money. Living beyond our means, building debt that, that we can't handle, causes struggle and tension and problems in relationships. Debt, debt prevents us from living the life that God has for us. Paul told Timothy, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves treasures of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. That we are able to, to love on others and not be strapped down and fearful and worrying about debt because... Either we're going to control our money or our money is going to control us. We want to make God the treasure of our heart so that we're free to pursue him and to love others. And to do that, that means that we're going to look at the big picture. We're going to earn little by little, save little by little. We're going to be generous. And we're going to avoid debt and live the life that God has for us. To God be the glory always. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds forever fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus. Amen.